to check on convergence, it's a good idea to monitor something else in addition to the residuals. And the drag or the drag coefficient is a good entity to monitor. Its calculation involves not only interpolation of cell center values, but also differentiation of those interpolated values. And any time you numerically differentiate something, you're going to increase the errors in it. So the drag coefficient inherently has more error in it. And for that reason, it's a good entity to monitor um, in addition to the, the residuals. Let's see how Fluent calculates a drag uh, coefficient. The solver will find the net force acting on the pipe wall by integrating the pressure and the shear forces on the surface. So if this is the, the pipe wall, okay, you have, um, so that's a wall. And similarly, over here, you can think of that as a cross section through the pipe. And there is, on the surface, there is a normal force acting on the surface. That's a pressure. And there is a tangential force acting on the surface. That's the wall shear. And in this case, the wall shear is going to be in the direction of the flow um, because the flow is going to you know, try to um, push the, pull the, uh, the pipe along. And by integrating these two forces, you can get the net force on the wall. Drag is a component of this force in the axial direction um, because by definition, it's the force in the direction of the flow. So we want the, the component in that direction. That's a direction of the drag. And perpendicular to that is the lift. And we can see here that only the wall shear is going to contribute to the drag because the pressure is perpendicular to the direction of the drag. Drag coefficient is defined as follows. So you take the drag and you non-dimensionalize it. And it's a good idea to look at non-dimensional quantities rather than dimensional quantities. Um, so you take the drag and you non-dimensionalize it by the dynamic pressure, so that's this entity, and you use the average velocity in, at any cross-section as the reference velocity. And then, so that's a dynamic pressure. It has the units of pressure, and you need to multiply it by an area to get units of, um, of force. And the appropriate area to use is what is called the vetted area, where which is the area of the pipe in um, in contact with the with the flow, and these entities in the denominator are uh, set in fluent as follows. So the drag coefficient in fluent is defined as um, as a drag divided by this denominator over here. So, so it's looking for a reference value. So it'll use a reference value of rho over, over here, reference value of velocity, and reference value of area. And these reference values are set in the reference values panel. Um, so we, to use the right value of rho, what we need to do is enter that value of rho, which we want used over here, over here. Similarly, the value of velocity that we want uh, fluent to use over here, or equivalently here, we enter over here. And the area, which is the area reference, we enter over here. And in this case, that is 2 pi r l. So once we enter those three entities, our drag coefficient will be calculated directly. The reference values won't affect the drag. It will affect only the drag coefficient. The reference values won't affect your solution. It affects only post-processing and post-processing of non-dimensional quantities. And let's see how to now implement this in Influent.